world, esoterically speaking. So it just doesn't just go back 20 million years, it goes back billions of years into previous incarnations of the planet. And um, then it finally comes forward to something that we can more tangibly grasp um, in terms of the unfoldment of the root races, the animal kingdom, the manifestation of human beings in physical form. And it, um, and I trace that, that evolution through the first six chapters. So for instance, the awakening of humanity and the spark of mind which came to humanity occurred in the, in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve were in the, in the garden and the eating of the, of the apple of wisdom or knowledge. Um, and uh, that's one specific area. <clears throat> but I also talk about how humanity were hermaphrodites before this period and how they became um, uh, separated into two genders and, um, and, uh, and so forth. Um, and there are many other controversial things such as um, the fact that um, um, uh, apes actually came from humans, not the other way around. Now, one of my major uh, um, uh, initiatives or, or, or inspirations for this initiative was to was recognizing the fact that humanity is disempowered in many ways and not knowing its origins. We're all souls, but we don't even know where the soul came from, came from, or what it is. You know, we're all trying to become soul conscious and so forth in in the new age, um, but we don't really know where we've come from. And so. This book is about trying to rewrite history in many ways, and the answers have been given to us. The Secret Doctrine by Babaski is, is a vast compendium of, of, uh, of uh, treasure, and the secret teachings have been scattered through this book deliberately in such a way as to confound the normal concrete mind. And basically, I've deconstructed this book and reconstructed it along timelines suitable for the Western mind. Um, and 2012 people focus on as a date for major cataclysms and so forth um, uh, and those things may well happen but, but my major take on 2012 is it's, this, it's the end of a 25,000 year procession cycle and the start of a new one um, and uh, we are at the moment in between two ages of Aquarius and Pisces there's a lot of conflict going on with the energies changing in this 500 year cusp period we're in the middle of two uh, cycles of the sixth ray of devotion or idealism and the incoming seventh ray of ceremonial order or magic. So we are literally at sixes and sevens with ourselves and um, um, we must just bear in mind the, the change in consciousness that's going on the, um, behind the outer seeming of things. And um, uh, the, Mayans, the Mayans are relevant at the moment. Um, I've just been to South America and Bolivia and, and Brazil. Uh, and I've uh, been to some of the sacred sites there and I've just written some recent newsletters that are based on um, this whole new sixth root race emerging and the intuitive consciousness that will be expressed in that race and the, the re-energizing of the old uh, Atlantean sites in, in South, both in South America and other, other places but particularly South America because it's supposed to be the home of the sixth root race and um, this was also the location of the original Shambhala, where Shambhala was anchored upon this planet. And so my theory is at the moment that, um, that we're coming full circle and Shambhala will return to South America, the re-energization of the sacred temples and sacred sites will take place in preparation for the new six week race, which is coming in the next 25,000 years and will last for millions of years after that. <laughs> so the fifth week race that we're in now will, will overlap that that other period for uh, of the six root race for at least half a million years. Again, the chronology is big. It's not what everyone's used to, but uh, I, I ask people to, to suspend their disbelief uh, momentarily and investigate these, these, uh, why these are reasonable um, chronological. Uh, this is, um, uh, we cannot uh, even grasp time. So when you mention mm -hmm. billions of years, and uh, my uh, thought was, why humanity looked for a body at all, well, what made uh, our soul to look for bodies manifesting mm -hmm. these energies? That's, that's one of the best questions one can ask, that I can answer and answer another thing. 
Um, you know, it's a great mystery as to why we are an incarnation. You know, people say, well, if the soul is perfect on its own level, what's the point of incarnating? Well, it has a lot to do with um, previous incarnations of this planet that, that, um, that were unsuccessful. It has to do with our relationship to the, of this planet to other planets within the solar system as a whole. Um, and you know, our, the, on, the ongoing evolution of that corporate entity called the solar system, the solar logos. Um, uh, and in, in many ways, the Earth is playing catch up for making up for lost time. And there was a, a great salvaging and redeeming process that was going on in this planet. And the incarnation of billions of souls through this the vehicle of this planet over, over millions of years is, um, in a sense, spirit incarnating into matter, redeeming that matter, and, and bringing it back up to spirit again. And, um, and so, um, as human beings liberate themselves, there is one more soul within the body of the planet that's being liberated. And uh, this is an accelerating process that is going on right now. Uh, the fastest that's ever happened in history. <clears throat> and we are on the verge of many, many uh, minor liberations, you could say, that are going to lead eventually to our major liberation. So even, so the, uh, the times are perilous, as I said before, and it all comes down to the right decisions that humanity will make so they can take advantage of this opportunity. New world order is preparing. So there are obviously some entities, they are governed by other energies, and other vibrations, they preparing for a certain shift on the earth, and the earth couldn't make a shift. Yes. Uh, what, what do you think? Uh, is there a black and white, a good and uh, sure. and the bad is fighting there? There is, and this this um, this fight has been going on for a long time. Uh, I mentioned the Atlantean cataclysms and and uh, war before, I think. And um, uh, this was uh, depicted in the great Hindu epic called the Mahabharata. What today a uh, casual, normal human being could do with the mind uh, to shift that collective mind to the good and serve to the best, to make the best outcome for all of us? Indeed. Uh, you know, follow your passion, your purpose, uh, and, and that will. Uh, manifests itself within your group, within your, your work environment, within your family, uh, within your community. So uh, it's just a matter of waking up and, and really serving with a, a, a passion and a fire and a zeal that uh, is working as if this is our last chance. Because uh, it, it well, it may not be our last chance, but um, uh, I think uh, if people can really work and serve with their hearts on fire with the spirit of service to their fellow humanity. That's where the answer lies. Great that we get out this message today. So all your work actually served the opening up minds and uh, uh, make us understand that there is uh, really much bigger than ourselves today and here in this uh, misled historical raised how we are and also in the manipulative world obviously we are caught into this you mentioned television the, all the media and people put asleep and actually dominant completely uh, with uh, just simple today's things and yes enjoy life because uh, obviously we have this uh, 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 opportunity on earth right now but uh, live for a bigger purpose and I'm really grateful that you came you gave us the honor thank you so much you thank visited you. us and uh, uh, introducing us to your great work and I really welcome that you're gonna put out that coffee latte <laughs> <laughs> type of <laughs> teaching because that's how we get easier Indeed. to uh, minds yeah. who Maybe never talk this way. Yeah. Thank you yeah. for the audience uh, watching the show today. See you next time. Thank you very much.